if you can push your way through that, that's a good litmus test to say you would enjoy kind of working in the field. I'd love to hear, let's say five years ago where you were, how you went about developing the skills to be able to eventually land a job. Yeah. So like I said, um, I was focused on the um, programming component. When I decided to get more serious about about making the transition, that was the part of of kind of the data science Venn diagram I was talking about that I thought I was the weakest. I've always kind of been a stats guy. I was a big uh, card player, poker player, fantasy sports, like all the, all the stuff, you know, uh, doing like probability and statistical analysis. I felt okay with that. I mean, obviously you need to brush up on that, those skills, but the programming I had, you know, I had never programmed in my life. I was focused on uh, learning the, the programming skills first. And so I started just, you know, there's, there's plenty of stuff when you just go out, you know, in, uh, on the, in the just general Google, you know, when you, when you're looking at trying to learn how to program, there's tons of free content out there. It's all pretty good. Um, so, and I was, and I had done enough research to know the most popular language is Python. So I was focused on learning just base Python uh, fundamentals that wasn't data science focused. Um, and it was just doing that. Um, I was still working full time. So I was just doing that on on nights and weekends. And and just when I had some tens of time, I was focused just trying to learn the basics of computer programming. A- as I started getting a little more into it, I stumbled across a Udacity uh, nano degree that was focused on teaching you Python with a focus on artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science. So I ended up going going that route, but I don't really feel like that was all that important as as much as not that I mean it was a great course, but um, you just need to it, it, you can get really distracted uh, on all these different resources. You'll get kind of like over you know overwhelmed with the amount of resources out there. So I think the most important thing is just pick one. They're all pretty good and just see it through because that's how you'll really really learn and and you got to learn the fundamentals of how to program and, and and go from there. So that was kind of the first step in my process was to get that. The, the programming component, because that's where I was really, you know, I had never programmed before, you know, I, until a few years ago. So, but yeah, th- so I, and I think it was, it's, it was kind of a good litmus test for me to see if I would really like it or not, because like programming is hard, <laughs> like, especially the initial like learning curve for programming is quite steep. So like, if you can push your way through that, um, that's a good litmus test to say you would enjoy kind of working in the field because a lot of data science is trying to figure out you know, coding, coding, how to code something, or, you know, you're always going to have that component of your job. So it's good to kind of test to see if, if you enjoy like that type of um, problem solving. I love a, a lot of things about what you just said there. So the first thing, just choosing a resource and sticking with it. I think that that's incredibly good advice. I made a whole video on that concept is that pretty much all the resources out there are really good, whether you're using Kaggle, whether you're using 365 data science, which I have a discount code for below, um, <laughs> or whether you're using Udacity, DataCamp, DataQuest, whatever they might be, they're all good resources. What matters is you choose one and you stick with it. It's also okay to experiment with a couple of them if you want, but you have to eventually choose one and just, just go down that road for a little bit. You can 100% supplement it with other resources, and I highly recommend that. But just, just finding one and sticking with it is one of the biggest things that people refuse to do for some reason. They feel like they're missing out on something by choosing one over another. If you really think about it, what's preventing you, aside from a couple bucks, from doing one and then doing another one? You know, learning right. is additive. It, it doesn't mean that just because you do one, you cannot take another, a, a different class in the future, uh, which... Yeah, and I think it's really, I think really the key to it is to find a, a, a platform that, that you're comfortable with and that kind of jives with your learning style because people learn in very different ways some people are more visual some people enjoy like physical books um you just have to kind of experiment with what works with you and then find someone who or find a platform that kind of uh you know meshes well with your learning style and and then go so it's it's, you're right it's not bad to kind of experiment at first but you gotta have a you gotta have kind of an end goal of that to say okay i'm I'm experimenting because i'm trying to figure out which one's going to work best for me and you're right you have to get rid of the anxiety of like oh if i pick one am i missing out from some of these others um but you do have to kind of get committed because you can kind of get get paralyzed by just 
just the sheer volume of different options and then you, okay. you never uh you never make a choice.